Now, as Nigerians celebrate this year's Workers' Day, organized labor, workers, students, market men and women, as well as members of civil society organizations are ready for an engaging outing. Today, the International Labor Organization will crown its one month long celebration of its 100 years anniversary, 100 years of fighting for the rights of workers. 100 years of fighting for the right of workers. That's the right one. Joining us now is managing editor, the Avalon Daily. Ayudele Adio. Good morning, Ayudele. It's nice to have you join us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. <coughs> 100 years of the labor movement across the world. How far so far would you say after revolutions on, from some countries have sparked reaction and reverberation across the world? <coughs> yeah, some, some countries, like you said, have made considerable progress. Um, I mean, you know, before the international labor movement came into being, workers were working between 10 and 16 hours every day. People have fought for, uh, you know, a more friendly eight hours to 10 hours maximum working day. People have fought for increased living wages um, for workers globally. They have fought for better safety conditions in workplaces. And of course, they have fought against child labor globally. Um, so, so you can say, you know, that um, particularly in the West, you know, considerable progress has been made. Um, the only issue is that um, it seems like Africa and Nigeria is being left behind in, in, in this global progress that is being made. We still have um, so many terrible working conditions across the country. You still have a situation where um, thousands and thousands of workers are being underpaid. You still have situations where, you know, there's, there's a lot of child labor. You drive down the roads and you see kids hawking rather than being in schools and what have you. So, uh, while the world is making progress in that regard, it seems like we're marking time on our, on our part. The, if, if you consider the working, like from what we read, some, it, it was the working conditions that led to the revolution, the yeah. industrial revolution in the first place. Uh, and like you said, in some in developing countries, Nigeria involved or inclu inclusive, uh, you still find some of those kind of conditions. Is it likely or is it possible or is it desirable to have another kind of revolution? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you see... Not, not necessarily in the way it took place hundreds of years ago, but... Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, it took, it took, it took um, the price of bread to go up by a fraction for there to be a revolution in France. And um, I, I do think that, I mean, we're even closer to it than you can imagine right. because if you look at the passing of the minimum wage, that has been raised to about 30,000 naira, where you and I know that if we lock ourselves in a room, um, about 18 states will not be able to pay that amount. So we're going to get to a point in this country where workers are going to stand up and demand better because their state governments will be unable to pay them their wages. And they would have to come to a point where there has to be broader reforms of what the working condition of the average Nigerian worker will be. So I think that time is becoming closer where we are going to renegotiate um, um, you know, the terms and conditions of the average Nigerian worker. The Nigerian worker will also have to increase his own productivity, not the situation where you have thousands of local government workers who come at the end of the month to just come pick salaries and allowances from their local governments and not add any value whatsoever to that um, job. You're going to have situations, I mean, you have situations where teachers who are supposed to be teaching kids in school stroll into school um, you know, at the end of, 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 of closing hours um, just to pick up their bags or sell a few sleepers that they brought for their colleagues and then the kids are not taught in classrooms. So there has to be an entire renegotiation of what working conditions are in Nigeria where to um, guarantee people, value, to, to value, value, for value has to be at the heart of everything where the Nigerian worker puts his best and he's rewarded and he gets a fair share um, for his sweat equity that has been invested um, in the Nigerian project. And I think that this minimum wage is going to get us there sooner than, than later because we're going to get to that point in the next coming months. All right. We look forward to uh, greater days for the workers and, and all of that. Adil Adio, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for thank having me. Okay, uh, AIs and uh, the future of work and labor and security mm. of jobs. Every 1st of May, Nigerian workers join the working populace to over, all over the world to mark Workers' Day. May Day is a symbolic reflection of uh, workers' contribution to the material, social and political well-being in the workplace and the society at large. Today, the International Labour Organization will crown its one-month-long celebration of its 100 years anniversary, 100 years of fighting for the rights of workers. 
Joining us now is uh, Managing Editor, the Avalon Daily, Ayodele Adieu. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast and Thank happy you for Workers' me. Day. Same to you. <laughs> <laughs> now the question on the lips of many. Yes, it's 100 years of celebration for the International Labour Organization, but here in Nigeria, many workers are saying, is there anything to celebrate? Um, I mean, there's very little to celebrate, and I can sympathize with the average Nigerian worker because, first of all, his take-home pay leaves him in the middle of the road. It doesn't take him home. Um, secondly, he doesn't have a roof over his head because there's no um, you know, efficient mortgage scheme that, uh, that enables him to own a house you know, as that when due. He doesn't have um, you know, a very good health care system or a good health insurance system, you know, that insulates him from, you know, major health challenges. Most times he has to crowdfund to, mm. to, to get um, decent health care. So th there's very little for the average Nigerian worker to be excited about. In fact, what you even call an increase um, in minimum wage is just taking him back to pre-2012 um, levels. Because if you look at the real value of 30,000 naira that he's earning today, is about the same thing that he was earning in 2011. But then that, these are the reasons why we have trade unions or, or sort of unions to fight to ensure that uh, the welfare of workers are secured. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, the unions are going to lead their own fight. But you see, there are, there are certain people who are saddled with the responsibility um, of building a nation, of building a country and taking um, executive decisions that are far reaching. Um, and that have positive impact on the lives of every Nigerian. And that has not been done. Um, and it's not been done for decades. This is not the situation of, of just um, the last few years. It's not been done for decades. So you have a situation where um, the Nigerian worker, as it were, um, is, I mean, the, the, if you look at the, the last, I think yesterday it was, I saw a report that showed that um, the living conditions in Nigeria is one of the worst in the world. And so the Nigerian worker basically um, is living on the fringes every single day. But, uh, but then, uh, this has not been done for decades. There is no hard and fast rule to achieving all of this. So how now can the unions, you know, bridge the gap to ensure that to an extent there is something better for uh, the Nigerian worker as much as we also look at the government to also play its part? Well, you see, uh, for, for the union, I think that the union will have to lead more intelligent fights. And by mm -hmm. intelligent fights, yes. because I think sometimes the union are, a lot, are very emotional. And you can also understand that. They are quite emotional because, yes, we're fighting for increased wages, just like we saw in the last time. They wanted 50-something plus thousand, now they got 30,000. Right. When the reality is that most states' governments are, will be unable to pay that amount, and we're going to go back to status quo, where workers will be owed salaries for several months, and you know we're just going, we're keep we're, we're running in circles basically. So until we get to the point where there's some level of executive leadership and vision from okay. from, from the government that leads the country, we, we will just be clutching at straws. Ayodele, adieu. Thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Thank you for having me.